Hello everyone, welcome back to another part of our AI one red to question series. Thank you for all your support which are providing to series. So without any further delay, let's get started. So we are already done till question number 80. Let's start with the question number 81. You are building an app named app one that will use Azure AI document intelligence. By the way, document intelligence questions are coming very often nowadays. So you should always put more attention to these document intelligence and open AI question. These are like the latest questions which are coming in your exam. Okay. To extract the following data from scanned documents. Okay. So these data you want to extract that is shipping address, billing address, customer ID, amount due, due date, total tax and subtotal. So we have already talked about it like uh, when we are discussing the difference between invoice and receipt model that uh, invoice would have the address shipping address billing address and rest of the things are like quite similar between receipt and invoice okay so we now already know like uh, its answer is going to be invoice uh, but let's read the question properly you need to identify which model to use okay so it is asking same thing and uh, must minimize the development effort okay which model should you use so again custom extraction it will require the like more development effort but still i want to like uh, show you some information about what is this custom extraction because in the last video we haven't talked about uh, the custom models we only talked about the pre-built models over here so these are the we already talked about these models id credit card so here custom models, uh, there are like two special, two special type of models which you need to take care of, that extraction and the classification. Okay, in extraction also, there is two type of it, neural and template. So just in the, uh, to like set you the difference between these two. So extraction is basically name is clear, it is to extract the information, or, but what uh, the difference between the like template and neural model? So if you zoom, let me zoom it for you. So yeah, as you can see, like this is a like simple difference between it. If you look at the template, which is also known as custom form model. So it is uh, just to target a, which have a common visual layout. So if your document has a common layout, then this will for fine for you and uh, more than 100 languages are support. Okay. And it also training requires very only few minutes. So it is much simpler than this neural which is a custom document and it can handle both structured and unstructured document but it training take half an hour okay and it only support english language so that is the basic difference like the layout difference basically it can work on a certain like if you have a common layout then only it will uh, support it and uh, you can train on that layout and it will work fine but here it can work on all the layout but its training take too much time okay and it's only supported for english language and uh, another thing is it's available in only select region only okay so not all regions are available in it next uh, about the custom classifier so you invoke the extraction model so it enables you to identify the document type so like that is the like basic different and another in is compose model we already talked about it when you group together different models then you can uh, like make a compose model which is a like group of multiple custom models so here you can see like they grouped multiple models they have provided model id and they just you have to compose it and it will make a single model which is a much larger model which can do all kinds of work with a single model id okay so you can assign up to 200 models into a single compose model okay so now I'll come back to our question so now we know what is custom extraction model contract model we already know for contracts and general document is now which is moved to the layout so invoice is our answer let's check it so it's absolutely correct coming to the next question you have an azure subscription that contains an azure ai document intelligence resource named di1 you create a pdf name uh, test pdf that contains tabular data okay so we have pdf and it contains a table you need to analyze it using our document intelligence resource how should you complete the blank one in line okay so it contains table so first we need to understand like who which document intelligence model can extract the tabular data so uh, we already know like uh, if we, we have already seen like if you have to find out 
uh, anything like words location and detected language and handwritten styles then we have to go for read but layout analysis model can extract the text table and uh, we have seen titles paragraphs and all the different layouts it can extract information from it so layout is the perfect answer here like uh, pre-built layout is going to be my answer i know it for sure okay so like basically here is the our command so it's a post request we are calling the endpoint and uh, it's still like when we are calling even the document retailing service we still api calls it is still recognized as form recognizer which it's it's earlier name okay so here definitely pre-built layout is going to come next uh, here uh, blank two i guess it's going to be in next question first let's check its answer so yes it's absolutely correct so next question it is talking about the line two okay this one so what should come here so this is a kind of a theoretical question okay because this is a very general uh, answer because in um, every type of whenever you use azure api uh, so you generally use this header for the authentication purpose to pass your subscription key basically okay whatever key you are passing here so that is going to be your subscription key here they did not write your subscription key just to like make you fool but here your subscription key will come to basically authenticate you and here the answer will be ocp apim subscription key so this is a uh, like um, this is the general purpose header which you use for the authentication purpose is it's a standard header for uh, most of the azure services including ai document intelligence uh, basically it used to identify the subscription key which will authorize the service uh, to basically use it and here basically what type of document you want to analyze using your document intelligence okay so here it is going to be answer so it's absolutely correct maybe you get confused with the subscription key but but the standard header is ocp apim subscription key this is a like default one okay next question is you have an azure subscription that contains an azure ai document intelligence resource di1 you build an app uh, that analyzes pdf but now it has handwritten content which we need to identify okay you need to ensure it will recognize this so how should you complete the blank one so here we are uh, here is a, our code which we are basically utilizing to basically identify the handwritten content and uh, we are getting result here i guess we have to pass the model what type of model we have to utilize so yeah so we have already checked in the previous video about the read model so which will help us to extract the lines word their location detected language and handwritten style also okay so our answer is definitely going to be the read model pre-built read so that is definitely going to come here and let's check the whole code okay here it is checking about the handwritten style and all so next blank is all about okay what should be the confidence score more than okay i guess that will be the next question so let's first check it so this is absolutely correct so next option it is asking about the blank two it's the same question so what should come here like uh, how greater than your uh, confidence score to be so it can uh, show the result okay it will recognize this is your handwritten content how sure your ai model should be so first is 0.1 so that is very less percentage like it will show anything even if it is not in handwritten content next is 0.575 so that is a like accurate industry standard uh, to use it like uh, as i already told in the previous videos like we generally take it like somewhere between 70 to 80 percent which is a like industry standard or uh, you can say industry co confidence threshold to set it uh, to get a reasonably accurate result because this is like a good balance between accuracy and the coverage because if you set it too high then uh, like ai has to become very sure then it will show only the right result because uh, and that will lead to like uh, it will uh, left out so many part of which is also handwritten content but it is just not 100% sure that's why it will left it out and it will not give you a result okay so like 0.75 is a correct good balance between uh, like the overall coverage and the accuracy of the result so this is going to be one answer this is also a like kind of a theoretical question come here next is you have an ape name uh, app one also it is utilizing custom so there is like a lot of document intelligence question which are coming right now to recognize contract documents okay so you need to ensure that the model supports an addition additional contract format okay so uh, 
uh, you already have an app and it has to recognize the contract documents okay so that means we have to utilize the contract model we have pre-built model for this and uh, you need to support an additional contract format okay so there is then like another format which has come up the solution must minimize the development effort okay otherwise we can utilize the custom effort but they want them to minimize the development effort also okay so now we have to deal with something else what should you do okay so let's see the option lower the confidence score threshold of app one so but that does not help to specifically support this additional contract format right so that is not going to be my answer it will basically reduce the accuracy also so that is very very wrong create a new training set okay that's look good and uh, add the additional contract format to the new contract set and create a train a new custom model but again the custom model creation will again require more effort and also even if you uh, like um, create a new model then you for some purposes you have to utilize the or model and for the this additional contract you have to utilize this new custom model so that is again a lot of work hectic work i don't want to do it or even if you want to compose it then again you have to use this mod first train it and then uh, previous model you have to compose it that requires a too much development effort so that uh, does not fulfill our condition next is add the additional contract format to the existing training set okay so now whatever uh, previous contract formats we have we just add this contract format to it uh, to our existing training set and retrain the model so this suits perfect to my requirement okay uh, it will again we can utilize that model we don't need to do much of thing just retrain it add the, it to the existing training model and that will do our work lower the accuracy threshold so again this will uh, again uh, reduces the accuracy and does not help me to recognize it it may recognize something very bad so that i don't want to deal with that okay so this among the over four options this is like my perfect answer so let's select it remember always you have to choose the best option which are available next is you are building an app that will process scanned ex expense claims and extract and label the following data so this is our data merchant information time of transaction date of transaction taxes paid total cost you need to recommend an azure ai document intelligence for the app also minimize the development effort what should you use so here you can see uh, like it is like some kind of invoice or uh, like receipt and we already know like uh, the address should come here to like utilize the invoice and in the option also there is no invoice so that's a perfect pre-built receipt model and because receipt model can all uh, extract all those fields so this is perfect and we already know what is uh, now re template neural so these also options come that's why i explained you the neural and the template and all these models so this is absolutely correct let's come to the next question you have an app that manages feedback you need to ensure that the app can detect negative comments by using sentiment analysis which is perfect service solution must ensure the managed feedback remains on company's internal network okay so that uh, is like it looks like an important condition which three actions should you perform in sequence okay so we need to take care of the sequence as well uh, in this condition like which will be like in the perfect synchronize uh, out of the three options for us so let's check it first is identify the language and uh, endpoint url and query the prediction endpoint okay provision the language service in azure so this is also like wrong sequence first you have to provision it then only you will get the endpoint right so this is absolutely not going to be my answer second is provision the language uh, resource in the azure okay so this looks correct then deploy a contain deploy uh, docker container to azure container instance then identify the language service endpoint url and uh, the prediction endpoint okay so this looks fine to me let's check the other option provision the language service in azure so same option deploy a docker container to own premise server okay so now we want to like company's internal network so that is definitely better than uh, utilizing azure container instance okay so this is correct and next is identify the language service endpoint url and query the prediction endpoint and here the run the container and query the prediction endpoint 
So when you run it, you definitely have to get the endpoint URL. So that comes under the process of running. And here we are, we have to actually run it to utilize it. So this is absolutely correct sequence. So let's check it. So yeah, it's correct. Next is you are building a chatbot for travel agent. Okay. The bot will ask users for a destination and must repeat the question until a valid uh, input is received. Okay. So bot will ask a user, okay, what destination you want to travel and until a valid input is received, the, it should repeat the question or user closes the information in only two cases. Okay. On which type of dialogue should you use? So it should repeat the question until a valid input uh, is received. Okay. Or the user closes the information so it has to only two option either the user has to provide the destination or it can close it which type of dialogue should you use okay so we have already discussed this question in pre or some of the previous video so i'm not going to waste too much time on this type of question but i will give you just a brief about all these dialogues so first is prompt so as we already know prompt ask for the input and it will like uh, take care of it will manage also it can configure to repeat the question until a valid input so which is perfect for our scenario so prompt is definitely going to and it can manage the context as well so it can take care of previous messages okay valid input is not found so it will again ask for it next is input so input is just to collect the user input it will not help this requirement of repeating the question so that is not going to be my option like uh, another one is adaptive so adaptive dialogues provide flexibility in our uh, conserve conversation flow but it does not help with uh, the requirement of asking it and just uh, repeating the questions again so that is definitely not and QA maker it's an we know as your surveys to like provide answer from a knowledge base so again that will not going to help me prompt is the correct answer next is you have an azure open ai service named ai1 that hosts three deployment of GPT 3.5 model. Okay. Each model is optimized for a unique workload. Okay. And you plan to deploy three models. Okay. Each app will access AI one by using REST API and will use the deployment was optimized for the apps intended work. You need, <coughs> you need to provide each app with access to AI one and appropriate deployment. The solution must ensure that only the apps can access AI1. So AI1 is uh, like our open AI resource. What should you use to provide access to AI1? And what should each app use to connect its appropriate deployment? So we have already done this type of question, similar question in all one of our previous video, but with a different language, like what you use to connect to an open AI resource. That was the, I guess the question was. So it is like api key deployment name deployment endpoint or deployment type so what should be your answer so like many people got confused when they just uh, remember the answer only okay because here they tricked it because if you like remember from the previous question we talked about okay we have to uh, like got the endpoint we have to we going to need the name deployment name and the api key but we what for what we need to we need the api key of this azure ai resources okay so that is definitely going to my answer here only one key is there but most people got confused with the deployment name or deployment endpoint because in the previous uh, also a similar question we talked about we also need endpoint we also need the name but name we need for the deployment okay and endpoint we are going to need this of azure open ai resource not of the deployment okay so that is the thing you need to remember. So this is going to be my answer. So this is absolutely correct. Next question is you can read this question. We have already like discussed about the concept of it. Just go through it. These are all uh, like open AI latest question. So just go through it and we are going to discuss more about it. And uh, let me know what is the uh, correct answer along with the explanation. And make sure you guys like like this video and make sure you let me know in the comments that you are following this series. That will keep me motivated to publish more videos. That's all in this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.